then in terms of the 1.5, I mean, are there any concerns from your customers now that there could be similar problems? I mean, have any of the customers reported like fears, you know, or, or actual actual incidents or not? We've seen no no incidents on the 1.5 Georgia. And it, I mean, you, you spoke, George, you spoke about uh, potential temperature conditions here in South Africa coming into play, affecting the cooling levels and that. In, in terms of the cougar, where, I mean, I know in America it gets really hot, places like Arizona and those, New Mexico and those types of places. I mean, is the cougar model or the escape model sold like in the Middle East or, or any, any other countries that have extreme, like Australia and that, that have extreme temperatures and have you seen effects on, of similar nature which we're seeing here I think, in South Africa. I think I need to clarify the kind of the response which was really it was intended to say that we're seeing uh, because it's a an effect of an overheat you would expect to see uh, that instances increase when you have an ambient temperature increase so it, it wasn't a matter of saying that South Africa in particular is Mm. Of, of a more extreme than other some of our other markets, as you point out, there are extreme markets around the world. Only that we have seen it now recently um, in, in the hot season as it comes in, which you would expect engine cooling systems to be under additional stress. And then, then my question relating to the earlier questions that I asked around the insurance, you know, insurance companies being in contact with with Ford. I mean, we've we've seen emails from Discovery, Telesure, a number of other insurance companies. When exactly was Ford from insurance companies made aware that there was a problem? And why did it take so long for that notice, that TS, I think it's a TSB or a TBS, to, to be put out? And should it not have been put out earlier saying to customers, look, if you have engine warning problems or lights coming on, bring it in and we'll, we'll check it out? Well, we're, we're constantly evaluating data from our service system, our warranty systems, um, to see if there's any patterns with uh, problems with vehicles. Uh, we, I believe, if I remember correctly, Discovery uh, was the first insurance company that, that contacted us early in 2015, early in 2016. Uh, and, you know, we've only really seen an escalation uh, in the second half of 2016 in the, in the number of cases. As I said, we every single case that we became aware of we have investigated um, to the point of taking engines out of cars and shipping them, taking damaged parts out of cars um, and shipping those to our engineering centers in the U.S. and Europe. Um, and what's really been helpful is when in the nature of a fire, um, it destroys what's burning, yeah. right? And so the evidence of the cause of the fire is, is very, very often inconclusive. You can't really tell what started it because it was destroyed in the fire. Um, so what's been very helpful is since December when we started the maintenance checks is we've had 624 completed and we've got about another 950 in the process. And, um, and we're getting data on cars that haven't had an incident. And that's really what's informed our engineers um, on what the, what the causal factors are and what we need to do to ensure that it doesn't happen. In some cases, um, the insurance company notifies, but the vehicle may already actually have been dispositioned, there's no yeah. longer available. So what well, we do, we do get uh, communicated with and notified of, we ask that we can have access to the vehicle. The, the insurance company, you know, based on their protocols, uh, grants that or, or not, right? Yeah. So we, I think even in those instances, the data points, is really that volume of information that allows us to really draw real conclusions. And as I mentioned, not just about what is happening, but what isn't, yeah. because it, it allows us to narrow and focus the resources in one area as opposed to you know, a complex, the whole complex vehicle. Yeah. And I mean, given the, the long journey that Ford has been on, from, I mean, we, we, we saw the death of, of Rochelle Jibby, which is incredibly sad and you know, absolutely uh, horrific way to, to die. Up until now, I mean, there's been numerous cases reported and there's social media and Facebook and all that kind of stuff where it continues to generate um, traffic and people reporting incidents. Do you believe that this could have been handled in any other way? You know, a quicker way, um, any, di any differently to allay 
consumer or customer's fears. I mean, there's, as I said, there's 4,500 affected cars. I mean, that's a lot of people who <coughs> are genuinely concerned. I, I think what's, um, you know, in, in kind of a kind of roundabout way, the amount of publicity generated uh, by the death has actually helped because customers maybe wouldn't have contacted Ford if their vehicle, uh, if they had a problem with their vehicle and their insurance company took care of it and they got a new car. Um, we've gotten a lot of information um, through and, and been able to contact customers that we might not have might not have thought to contact us. So, um, so that's actually been helpful in allowing us to get that body of data as well. You know, I just I think that it's it's important. That what we, we we always do is go back and look at what we've done, whether it's technical or communications or otherwise process, and understand it. Could we have done it better? And that's just part of Ford's DNA towards improving the product. You know, so I think we're better at this now than we were 15 years ago, and we'll be better tomorrow than we were today uh, as part of this process. And uh, that that's that's Ford. And the, the, the lessons, I think it was uh, Mark who was, Mark, Mark who was... Uh, Mark Galvin. Mark, yeah, Mark Galvin. From, from the, the, the previous model, like there was the, the Pinto. Um, I mean, those, those lessons, have those lessons been taken and how have they been used to, to help Ford in, in this situation with, with Google? What, what lessons have you learned from there that, you, that you've used here? I think it would, be, it would be difficult for us to say that you know, something from 35 years ago that the, the technical side from the Pinto is directly related to a 2012 Kuga. The vehicle is completely different. Um, but Ford does have a rigorous engineering process and uh, uh, analysis process. And we found over time, frankly, that uh, that the information that we can gather is, is what enables us um, to, to react in a way that, to improve that, that process. So it's, it's, we're, we're a living organization. Uh, and we're constantly looking for ways to improve our processes, and we learn every day. Um, so, you know, we, we're confident that our engineering processes um, result in, in world-class products. Um, but we're we're continually in, improving on that and and, um, and honing, them. And, I, and we'll continue to do so. And in in terms of, I mean, I was chatting to a couple of people within the the National Consumer Commission. We heard that they actually want this this recall to have happened, the recall that you've announced today, to have happened at least a week ago, and that Ford was saying, look, just just hang on, you know, it's going to cause chaos in terms of bringing cars in and parts and, and all of that. I mean, what is what is your comment on that? Did you want the did, did you want the recall to be done a bit later to give you time more time to conclude your investigations? Well, I think um, you know we've been interacting with the NCC on, on an ongoing basis. Uh, we met with them, George and I both met with them in, uh, uh, I guess Mark and I met with them in December. Um, you met with them last week with me. Um, and the, uh, you know, we've been in constant contact with them. We've been trying to ensure that they were happy with the, with the rigor that we were putting into the system. And, and I do want to point out that the, the maintenance check that we put in place in December um, you know, all the none of the fires that have happened since then um, happened in a vehicle that had gone through the maintenance check. So, so it was effective. Um, what we did in December was effective. Um, although we're always trying to, if, if a recall needs to be made, we want to do it as quickly as we possibly can, and that's why we announced it today. And we won't hesitate to go back and take that information, even from the vehicles we saw in, in December, and say, "Customer, we've learned more." You know, I talked to you early on. I've learned more from that. We want to come back and, and, and uh, take some additional you know, actions to ensure that, that safety. Because that really is the priority. Um, there's, there's been no discussion about um, doing it in a way that would not affect vehicle sales or, or, uh, or other elements. There's no, there's no basis to that, to that discussion. And, and in terms of, I mean, the, the, the company is taking responsibility by doing the recall, they've done taken responsibility by doing the maintenance, and as the NCC was saying, there are going to be regular bi-weekly checks and report backs. That I mean, 
do you feel that there was anybody in Ford who could have done anything differently, regardless of, of their position in, in the company? Is there something, and in terms of, of responsibility, is there somebody who should have taken responsibility that didn't or could have or wouldn't? Do? And is Ford doing an investigation around that at all? We, I can't emphasize enough how many people have been involved in this all the way to Detroit. Um, daily meetings uh, for months to get to the bottom of what was going on with this. Um, we've been, uh, the, the process that we have is normally very rigorous. I'd have to say that this particular instance, the, the, these events have taken that to a whole new level um, from my experience. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I believe that uh, that we pushed the system as hard as we possibly could in this instance. We'll look again to see if there's something we can learn from it, but it, I mean, mm -hmm. that, that's still our approach. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your time.